Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hue's History. So glad that you could make it. We're gonna bang out the 10th Amendment for you guys in the next few minutes as we continue our Constitution for Dummies series. Explaining it simply, not because you're simple, but because everybody needs to know some basic stuff before you get to the fancy stuff. So strap on your boots of learning. We're about to knock out some 10th Amendment. Giddy up. All right, 10th Amendment. So if you're a libertarian, if you're like a Ron Paul guy or girl out there, you love the 10th Amendment. If you could have babies with the 10th Amendment, you'd have babies with the 10th Amendment. Let's look at the words and then we can talk it out. Here are the words. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So there's the Reserved Powers Amendment. Um, in, in terms of a mnemonic device, sometimes I'll think of the Tenth Amendment as being the last seat in the Bill of Rights, thinking that it's reserved, it's saved for somebody. But basically what this means is that if it's not in the Constitution, if you can't find the power in the delegated portion of the Constitution, which mostly is Article 1, Section 8, which lists congressional powers, then if we don't give it to the federal government, then it gets kicked to the states. Very simple examples would be something like like marriage laws or uh, the DMV uh, dealing with driver's licenses. Those are dealt at the state level. Education is basically a, uh, a reserve of powers. Of course, this gets muddied when we start looking at other parts of the Constitution, like the 14th Amendment, which guarantees state um, states treat its citizens equally. So if you're talking about marriage and gay marriage, certainly marriage is a reserved power. Uh, the Tenth Amendment kicks that to the states, but the states can't deny equal protection. And of course, that's a very muddled, weird argument that you can have down in the comments below. Uh, an easy way to think of this if you're a kid and you're trying to wrap your head around what reserve powers is, is to think of it this way. Um, if your parents made notice that they were going to put everything they could tell you to do on the fridge and they put up there they could set your curfew and they put on the fridge that they could um, I don't know uh, decide what color the house is gonna be where you're gonna go on vacation what food you're gonna cook for dinner those would be delegated powers powers given to your parents and you probably wouldn't have a problem with that but if it wasn't on the list Let's say, for instance, what posters you could put up in your bedroom. You would make the presumption that that was reserved for you to make up your mind. And that's the concept. So the Tenth Amendment limits the power of the federal government by giving that power to the states or respectively to the people. Those are the words of the Tenth Amendment. Now, where does it get fishy? It gets fishy when you look at the flexible parts of the Constitution, like the General Welfare Clause, the Elastic Clause, and the Interstate Commerce Clause, all found in Section 1, Article 8. If you're going to read anything in the Constitution, read Article 1, Section 8, and read the Tenth Amendment, because you can see that the Constitution um, is kind of bipolar. Um, for instance, the General Welfare Clause is in the very beginning of Section 8, where it says that one of the jobs of Congress is to provide for the general welfare. Right? Another one is to regulate commerce between the states. Then when you kick in the elastic clause, which is the last phrasing in Article 1, Section 8, Congress shall make all laws necessary and proper for executing the, for executing the foregoing powers, that list, then you start getting muddied. So, if I have the ability to make all laws necessary and proper to provide for the general welfare and to regulate commerce between the states, then definitions count. And we start seeing those being used to expand power. So, for instance, um, regulating commerce between the states has been expanded to mean um, regulating pollution between the states. That that between the states is interstate commerce, so you can't trust one state to regulate pollution. Therefore, Congress is going to regulate pollution. Another example would be, actually, Obamacare uses interstate commerce clause because health insurance is a commerce that can go between states. Drugs like marijuana 
and why the federal government can still arrest people through the DEA is commerce between states. Uh, we wouldn't have Social Security without the General Welfare Clause and the Alaska Clause or Medicaid or Medicare. And some of you probably are clapping out there saying, absolutely, we shouldn't have those things. See the libertarian argument that if we are going to take the Alaska Clause and Interstate Commerce Clause and stretch them to mean anything, then it nullifies and voids out the Tenth Amendment. Why do we have the Tenth Amendment if we're not going to use it. And then of course you'd say, why are we going to have the Elastic Clause and the General Welfare Clause if we're not going to use it? You can fight it out in the comments below. There you go. I don't know what else to say. I feel bipolar. There you go, guys. Make sure you check out other lectures. Subscribe to Hip Use History and click the link below and you'll see lots of other, other channels that you should check out. Uh, where attention goes, energy flows. This is my class and the bell's going to ring and I got the kitties coming in for the learning. So I got to stop the teaching on the YouTubes. We'll see you guys next time.